We're going to look at the concept of plotting points on a Cartesian plane. Now, I'll often refer to things like this, like Battleship, but I think that's a game that some kids have not ever played. So, um, what, what we're working with is a grid. And when you play Battleship, you're using the same kind of idea. You're working with this grid system. Um, maps use it. Uh, our GPS coordinate system uses it in uh, varying refined ways. Um, but the idea here is that a Cartesian plane is two dimensions. So anything on this piece of paper here, this is two dimensions. Uh, my hand coming off the paper, that's going into three dimensions. So we're only worried about things in two dimensions uh, in the case of a Cartesian plane. Um, what we do when we're representing points on a Cartesian plane is that we draw two number lines. Uh, at right angles, generally one horizontal and one vertical, um, to create a grid uh, base or a graph where we can plot some points or graph some points. Uh, and some of these words, graph, plot, are interchangeable. Graph and grid um, are interchangeable. Cartesian plane and grid, graph. So a lot of these words you'll kind of hear uh, me use interchangeably to kind of get used to them. So what I have here is I just set up a base uh, vertical axis. So this is my base vertical axis. Um, it's going to be the what's known as the y axis because the y axis is the vertical axis. The horizontal axis, and this is a little trick on drawing a grid uh, in your notes without having uh, um, grid paper uh, or graph paper as you may call it. Um, if you take a second sheet of paper, and I just have a short sheet of paper here that I've been using, and you can use the grid lines that are already on the page along with these grid lines to create a pretty accurate grid. Um, so what you do is you set your center vertical line, and I have it here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So seven lines, so the middle of that, um, sometimes you won't use a middle, but in uh, a lot of cases we're going to use the middle uh, section of it, but we have one, two, three, four. So right here, this is our middle point. So I'm going to set this down to the middle point, and I'm going to count one, two, three, four over here. So I'm actually going to put a little tick at each line on this page, and then the same thing here: one, two, three, four. And you see that one's a couple of them are a little bit off. That's okay. We're not looking to be perfect here. We're working with the tools that we have. I'm gonna make a second set. I'm just gonna go down to the bottom and I'm gonna make a second set of ticks. And I'm gonna use this second set along with the first set to draw some straight lines up and down. I can make this as wide as uh, a piece of paper uh, will fit across, but I can use this now to draw the grid lines. And I can make myself a quick little graph. Um, I know this is a little bit tedious if you don't have graph paper, but working in the situations that we are, this is probably the best that we're going to get. Four there, and one, two, three, and four. So here we have our grid lines all lined up. If you use like a blue pen, then you could just stick with the color of lines that are on the page. Um, if you want, you can actually make this into a full out grid by drawing the horizontal lines. They're fairly quick to draw. So these are all my X axis lines. Um, I'm gonna draw that center one there and just label that X. So that's my X and Y axes, my center axes. If you want, you can make yourself a full out grid like that. Um, if you want to make it a little fancier, what you can do is add yourself a uh, thicker line in the middle of each axis. So I can just kind of slide my ruler over a bit, make that a little bit thicker, bolder. And that lined up there. We have a little bit of thicker, bolder axes in the middle, and then they're labeled X and Y. So any of these horizontal lines are along the X 
um, path. Any of these vertical lines are along the Y path. So we have a horizontal and a vertical number line. We can actually label this number line. Um, we'll use something brighter, maybe like red. One, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, one, two, and three, negative one, negative two, negative three. Now note my graph isn't perfectly square. That's okay. It doesn't have to be exactly square. It depends on the situation. This actually, this center portion, your x and y uh, baselines, might not even be at the middle of the graph. They might be shifted over to one side or the other depending on the situation that you're dealing with and what you're trying to graph. But in general, we try to keep them to the middle um, if we don't know what we're doing. So there's a basic way to draw the graph. Um, so we have our x-axis, our horizontal number line, our y-axis, our vertical number line. Coordinates are values on the x and y axis. So two, negative two here, that's a y coordinate. It's on the y axis. Okay, this is the y axis going up and down that y number line. That's a negative two. So that's the y coordinate. X coordinate of three over here because it's three on the x along the x axis. A point is a speci is specifically an x and y coordinate pair. So we have a pair of numbers. The first one is x. So it's or it's called an ordered pair. Okay, so an ordered pair because x is always first. Think of your uh, alphabet. When you get down to it, it's x, y, z as your last three letters. X, then y. So the x coordinate comes first. The horizontal value comes first, then the vertical value. So if we were to have, say, a point x, y, let's even make one up here and we'll call it negative 3, 2. So the point negative 3, 2 represents negative 3 on the x-axis, 2 on the y-axis. Notice I'm not putting points on the axis themselves. I'm putting the point where they actually meet. So that point right here, this point right here, is negative 3, 2. It's the point where negative 3 and 2 intersect. Um, the intersection of the x and y-axis, this point right here is 0, 0. That is actually known as the origin. So that is the origin point. So if someone refers to the origin, then they're talking about the initial value of 0, 0. So a little practice here with plotting some points, some examples. Um, you'll notice I kind of scratched off some of these points. Putting every single number, it kind of gets messy. It gets confusing. I like to put every second number. So I count by twos. Be careful when you're doing that, that you actually go 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, and don't accidentally put them side by side. So I got rid of those ones because it was getting kind of messy. Um, and you want to try and keep it as clean as you can so that you can kind of follow along what's on the graph. So we're just going to plot these points here. Um, two, four. So again, points are always in the form x, y. So we go to the x coordinate to two, and then we go up to four. So two, four is right here. That is 2, 4. We can label that like that. The next one is negative 2 and 4. So we go along the x-axis to negative 2 and up to 4. We get a point up here at negative 2 and 4. The next one, negative 2, negative 4. So I go along the x-axis to negative 2, down to negative 4. So that's negative 2, negative 4 down there. The next one is 2 and 4. So I go along the x-axis to 2, down to negative 4. That point's down here. So 2, comma, negative 4. And then I got two more here. I got 0, 6. So 0 means I don't move anywhere along the x-axis. I just go right up to 6. 0, 6 is right here. And then I got 8, 0. So that actually means I'm going to move along the x-axis to 8 and not go up or down on the y-axis. So right here is my point 8, 0. 
So that's just a quick look at graphing some of these lines. You'll notice um, when I made my grid, yes, we don't always make them perfect. That's okay. These are just to approximate things. So you may have to fudge things a little bit when you're drawing these by hand. Um, as these two points here, if you see, it's pretty good um, at the top. But as I come down, it narrows down, tapers down. So these aren't perfect squares. It's okay. We're doing our best in what we, with what we have. Um, so some questions you can take a look at are from the worksheet 5.3 in the library. Uh, questions 2 A and B, number 4, number 6 A and C, 8, 9, and 10.